Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a Zoom with us by Florida Vision Technology. My name is Jose, coming to you live from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hopefully, everybody is doing well. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about the Braille Touch Plus, an accessible Android-based tablet that has a built-in Braille display. Uh, specifically, we're going to get into um, math in the classroom and using Google Classroom to interact with teachers. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. My guest today is Joel from uh, Humanware. Joel, how are you? I'm great, Jose. How are you doing this morning? Thanks for I'm having doing, me. I appreciate you being here. I'm doing pretty well. How, how are you doing? Let's, let's catch up, man. I haven't talked to you for a while. How, how have you been? I'm doing okay, man. I'm up here in Baltimore and uh, it's been a really long week as it has been for all of us. So I'm, I'm glad it's Friday, but uh, things here are good. We're having we're having big storms today, and we're going to get a few inches of rain, and I'm just hunkering down, doing, uh, doing webinars and doing my thing. There you go. So, Joel, um, for people who are with us live and who are, witness, are listening to this on a, our podcast channel or our YouTube channel, can you go ahead and tell us what you do for Humanware? Sure. So, I'm a, my title is Blindness Product Specialist, and uh, I'm, I'm part of a three-member team of the, for the, the blindness support in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a counterpart on the West Coast, and uh, there's one more guy in Chicago. And we travel all over the country, and we do webinars supporting our blindness products, me specifically meaning the Braille Note Touch Plus, uh, Braille displays, and, of course, the, uh, the uh, Victor Stream and Trek. And... Frequently, a lot of my time I would spend uh, traveling around the country working with a lot of teachers, a lot of students, and a lot of consumers doing workshops and trainings and just getting people used to what the technology can do and helping people solve their, their individual accessibility solutions, like figuring out what product is going to work for a given situation and, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Of course, the last few months I've been doing that all from home and I'm very, uh, very intimately acquainted with zoom at this point and that's going well you know I've, it's a it's a new way of working with everyone we've been doing it on and off you know when i'm when i'm not on the road that's what i've been doing for the past couple of years but it's it's been a, it's been a little bit of a different game but that's working out pretty well too just like uh just like this morning yeah very cool yeah i'm doing the same thing having to uh become very intimate with zoom uh obviously for all you know all our remote training and our demonstrations and you know these zoom with us sessions uh, very cool. So, Joel, what is the Braille Touch Plus? Can you give us a, a little description of the device and why people need it? You bet. Uh, so, I'm holding a Braille Note Touch Plus in my hand. I can kind of hold it up here. You might get a little camera shot of it. It is a Android tablet about the size of an iPad or, you know, any other conventional Android tablet. It has a full-size touch screen. That's un that lays underneath the uh, Braille keyboard. You lift the keyboard out of the way and you can get to the touch screen. And it also has a 32 cell refreshable Braille display on the front and it has built in text to speech capability. So you can run traditional Android apps and you can also run the, what we call Keysoft. That would be the, the set of productivity apps that is created by humanware and built into the device itself. It's running Android 8.1, which I believe is Oreo. I get confused yeah, yeah. with all the it's junk Oreo. food. Yeah, yep. I get confused. <laughs> uh, I, I just go by the numbers because I'm like, oh, was it, was it, you know, Lucky Charms or was it donuts? <laughs> yeah. Like, and then I get hungry. But no, so it's 8.1, which is which is a pretty recent uh, version of Android. And of course, it takes advantage of all of the newer Android accessibility. Android has come a long way in the past couple of years in terms of being able to provide uh, the accessibility needed for really getting inside Android apps and, and really making it a, a useful tool. And boy, has it changed. So from 2015 to 2020, it, it's like Android suddenly showed up and, and became a, a major player in this arena. And humanware has been planning to take advantage of that for a long time. And that mm. investment's finally coming true. So it's great. Very cool. Very cool. 
So let's get into it, Joel. Let's, uh, let's talk about math in the classroom and why it's important to be able to access that in Braille and how, how students can utilize the Braille Not Touch Plus for math. Yeah, you bet. So let me talk about a little bit of history first, and then we'll get into the nuts and bolts. So when I was in school, which was a long time ago, and you probably had this experience too, Jose, math was one of the big challenges, right? You could write something and read it back to your teacher in English class or literature, or you could type it up on a computer and, and get that done. It, it, the, the challenge was there, but once you, once you figured out a solution, there's a solution. But how, how would you do math? You can't just type it all out. And looking back at your math in Braille is great. You can do your Braille math homework, but then how did you get it turned in? And how did all that happen? So my solution was I had to give my hard copy Braille math homework to um, my TVI, who would then turn that into print math and then turn it into the teacher and it would be graded and I'd get it turned back in, you know, handed back to me with some comments that were also possibly then brailled so I could read them. And then maybe I had to do corrections, right? Yeah, so yeah. if I do this, if you do this back and forth, you know, slow hand things in, it takes a day or two, you get it back. You could be, it could be a week later by the time you get everything straightened out and you're falling behind in math class. No matter how hard you try, it's just the speed of that, that system, the going back and forth, very hard to keep up. And I was falling behind more and more in math class, not because I couldn't figure it out, although it was hard for me to figure out how, to, how they're doing you know, long division on the board, that sort of thing, that was an issue too. But just the sheer process of getting things graded and the going back and forth was a huge building block or a huge uh, traffic jam, if you will, for getting mm -hmm. things done. So years later, and I, you know, I wish I had one of these in school. Here, oh, yeah, is a, here is a solution to that problem with the Braille Note Touch. So I'm gonna open up the word processor. I think oh, of the word- Before you do that though, let's go ahead and uh, share your screen so people- who, Oh yeah. People who are uh, viewing this live, they can see what's going on and follow Thanks for you. reminding me, that is an important step that we do not want to skip here. Yeah, and for those of you who are live right now, if you have any questions while we're going through the demonstration of Key Math and Google Classroom, go ahead and just put it into the chat and we'll go ahead and try to answer that for you. So just so, just so you guys playing along at home understand what's going on, I am logged into Zoom with the Braille Note. So I'm running the Zoom app on my Braille Note Touch Plus. And I am, I assume you can see my screen now, is that correct? Correct. We can awesome. see that. So I have shared my screen and you are seeing the main menu of the device. So right now I'm on the email app and I'm scrolling up and down through the various uh, apps that are on the main menu. So there's all applications. That's where, that's where everything you download goes. Uh, the Play Store is on here, which is where you would download apps from. And here is the word processor. It's called Keyword. Remember I mentioned to the Keysoft apps. Okay, so I think of Keyword as the main productivity app. You know, if you, it's the area where you can, you can write something and it's a full-fledged editor, but it's also where we would branch in, into math. And I know that, that we, our math is our focus today. So let's imagine, if you will, that I'm on this blank canvas here. And I'm going to type on the Braille keyboard and you'll see that as I type, it's going to write Braille SIM or SIM Braille first, and then you're going to get those letters turned into, into print. So for instance, if I'm, if I'm writing at the head of my paper, you know, at the top of my paper for my math homework, I'm gonna write my name. So I'm gonna say Joel Zimba, right? And I'm gonna have a new line and I'm going to say, math homework, right? And I'm writing in grade two Braille. And as I write, every time I space away from a word, so once a word is finished, the Braille translation can happen. And, we, and uh, I'm reading it in grade two Braille. And on the screen is, is coming up in, in, a, in a visually readable format. And just so you know, this is 
going to be a Microsoft Word document. It's the native format of the word processor. So as soon as I save this document, I can email it uh, to my teacher to turn it in. I can, uh, if I'm, if I'm working with another student, you know, if it's a teamwork sort of collaboration project, which is becoming more and more common, they can see what's going on just by me sending them the document, or I can even open up my screen and they can kind of take a look at what I'm writing. And it, it's, a, it's a great solution for collaboration as well as a purely instructional point of view. So here I am, I'm in my math homework document, right? And I'm gonna write number one, as we always number our problems, right? And I'm gonna type a new line character. And now here comes the cool math. So I'm going to type a keystroke. Uh, it happens to be backspace with M, but I could also find that from my context menu, which is the magic menu on the Braille note where all of the options are found. So if I open that up, I'm opening it up. There's a dedicated button on the Braille Note Touch on the front. There's a little square button. And if I hold it down, I get this, what we call the context menu. So if I open up my file functions, here are all of the different options. So here are the save as options, right? Oh, I just popped out of that, my apologies. And I'm gonna open up the math functions. So here we are going into math mode. What's actually happening is I'm opening up an app called Key Math, right? Another part of KeySoft, it's Key Math. And I am, I'm now in, in Key Math and it says typesetting mode and it says Nemeth code. So we can do Nemeth code on here. We can also do UEB math, which I don't know quite as well. I grew up using Nemeth code and I think Nemeth in my head. So I'm slowly yeah. learning UEB. You yeah, the same as way, well. Jose? Yeah. yeah. As well. yeah <laughs> I'm old school, man. I have to yeah. use my US Braille, my Nemeth. Um, yeah, well, hey, I'm Nemeth is not, UEB. you know, Nemeth is alive and well. It's It kind of goes state by state. And in some states, unfortunately, it's county by county. So Nemeth yeah. is alive yeah. and well. I think Florida is a Nemeth <laughs> state, right? Yeah, I believe we're doing UEB now. We have a lot of our uh -oh. kids going over to UEB. Uh-oh, well, before I come to Florida, I have to brush up on it for sure, right? <laughs> All right, so let's say we're, let's say we're doing our, our math homework now. So I could do a, a math problem like something like 2x squared plus 4x plus 8 equals 512, right? And I have to write my Nemeth code correctly, right? So I have to put a space around my equal sign and I have to use number signs. And this doesn't look great yet, but as soon as I type the enter key and a visual math preview appears at the bottom of the screen and you'll see that the exponents are written visually correctly and it renders that as a, as a good looking, visually appealing math equation, right? So, so there, therein lies a lot of the magic is even as I'm doing my math, it's coming up in a visually appealing format. And I can just take that image and pull it into my homework, which we'll, which we'll do momentarily. Mm -hmm. But, but let's, let's make this a little more interesting. So instead of saying 4x, and I just pressed one of my little cursor rooting keys here, and I moved back into my equation. So instead of saying 2x squared plus 4x, Let's say I want, to, I want to write something more like 4 over 8x. So I'm editing my equation. And again, as soon as I press Enter, it's going to be updated, right? And you'll see, and that's, that's just for a little bit of, of showing you that even the fractions will come out looking visually appealing and looking correct. Nice. So this is a, it's an editor field, right? So you can write something like, I don't know, 10 or 12 lines. So I could solve this equation, right? I could, I could simplify the fraction, right? I could turn my next line into 2x squared plus 1 half x plus mm -hmm. 8. And then I would subtract my 8 to the right-hand side. And then I could divide by 2. And I could have line after line of solving the equation, right? 
-hmm. And that's, that's great. You know, these, these long complicated equations and I could take that whole, that whole equation and pull it in, but let's, so let's, let's walk through that real quickly here. I'm going to use my export command, which is backspace with E, the letter E. So I'm holding down the backspace key and typing an E and it says move to clipboard. And I'm dropped right back into my equation, right into my homework document, right? Exactly okay. where I left off. All I have to do is paste it. Now it's pasted back in here. Awesome. And there we go. Now you're going to see on the screen, this comes up in Simbrail, right? And mm -hmm. that is so I can read it as, as the user of the, of the device. It's assuming that I am a Braille reading uh, person. And so it's, it's presenting this in a form I can read. But just to show you that there's, there's no uh, sleight of hand going on, if I render a visual preview of the document, and I do that by typing enter with V, the letter V for a visual preview, and I say, yes, I do want to use the PDF previewer built into Google Drive. You will see that it does render that equation correctly, even in my document. So if I were to email this to you, or if we were to print it out, or do whatever we're going to do, you would get the normal looking printed equation. Printed but text. for me, I, it, it, looks, it looks the way it needs to look here in Braille. Nice. Awesome. So let me show you one other great thing about, about key math. Any, any questions so far? Any comments? Any thoughts? Um, uh, nothing yet. Nothing that comes to mind yet. I mean, okay, cool. So let me pop back in here. I'm going to show you one of my favorite features of key math. So let's say we want to find, uh, the circumference of a circle, right? Mm -hmm. And the circumference equals what? C equals uh, two pi r, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I don't know how to write pi in Nemeth code. I can open up my context menu. And for those of you um, who are watching this, your context menu, if you don't know how to do something within an application, if you bring up your context menu, that's like your best friend. Anytime I'm training a, a student or you know anyone on their Braille Touch Plus, I always tell them, if you don't know how to do something, open up your context menu and nine times out of 10, you're gonna find your answer. Right, and, and we call it that because it changes based on what document you're in or what yeah, app you're in. What application, so yeah. So I have scrolled down here and I'm, it says insert symbol. And you'll see that right after insert symbol, it says backspace with dots three, five. And for those of you who know Braille, that's the I in, the sign for the letters I in. So backspace with I in for insert will, in, will take you into the insert symbol function. But here it is in the menus. I'm gonna select it by pressing one of my cursor reading keys. And here we are at the Nemeth table of symbols. And if I scroll down through here, we get comparison symbols. That's like less than and greater than and equal. And we even have all the numbers in here. But if I come down to Greek symbols and select that, here we are in a list of all of the Greek symbols, right? Alpha, beta, delta, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna cruise down here and find pi. And I can just- this, For oh. those of you who are watching the screen, I mean, you're seeing this visually. You know, Joel, he's reading this on his Braille display, and he also has the ability to use speech if he wants to, but he's reading this all right now on his Braille display, so it's, it's super cool. And so the, you can see that the highlight changes on the screen for what I'm seeing at the moment. So for instance, it's uh, now I'm looking at Omicron, and it, and it says, and then it has the Braille characters for the Omicron character. And that would be highlighted visually. So that is the line that I am looking at on my one line rail display. So I'm looking at this a line at a time. I'm, I'm reading line by line using the, the thumb keys to navigate on the front of the device. So I'm going, here pre, I press the previous button, here's Omicron. I press the next button, here's Pi. And so if I select Pi, bam, oop, they wrote it in the wrong place. That's that we're going to call that operator error, but look at that. The symbol for pi, which is dots four, six and a P got typed in here. So I'm going to delete that from there. 
but then I'm going to come to the end here and I'm going to type pi because now I know what the characters are, right? So two pi r, but let's say our r is, I don't know, four, right? So now we have c equals two pi r and I could solve for, for that answer, right? I could say c equals eight pi and then I could use the approximation of 3.14 and I'd come out with 24, you know, 24 something, right? And that would be our, our answer. So I would say something like C equals eight pi, and then I'd say C equals uh, 24.8, and there we are. So all three lines of that equation would now be part of our our answer. And again, all I would do is export that with using backspace with E. By the way, the backspace with E command, the export command also found in the context menu. So none of these keystrokes are secret. You don't have to memorize them. And here I am back in my document. And again, all I have to do is paste it. And it is now inserted back into my my uh, homework document, my keyword document, which again is a DOCX document. And if I use the right keystroke, there we go. It's gonna bring us up a preview again. And there's the visual preview, so you can see that the equation is inserted in there. And if I needed to scroll down, I could do that. I could also do things like pinch to zoom you know, do what I needed to. So if I had 10 math problems in here, I could scroll through that document and I could enlarge the parts of it that I needed to. But fortunately, this is, this is a short assignment. It only has these two, these two math problems in it, right? And mm -hmm. then I could just save this document. I could email it to you. I could upload it to a shared folder in Google Drive, which by the way, talk about productivity. You can have documents in these shared folders and hop right into Google Drive and pull in what you need to, or then upload a document and it would, it would appear where you wanted it to go. And then anyone could, could just download it. Anyone who has yes. access to that save folder saves a ton of time both at work and in school, right? Where would we Very be cool. without, the cloud, without the cloud services? So that is key math. What do you think? Uh, Joel, we, we, have, yeah, we actually have a question. I'm yeah. gonna unmute somebody real quick. Uh, 305, you're live with us. You have a question? No, Jose. Uh, hi, this is Diana. Uh, no, hey, Diana. I was trying to get in, and yeah, thank you. No, I finally got in because I've oh, been good. trying for I don't know. Yeah, but it's okay. okay. No, I, I raised my hand because I was listening to some music on, and I just oh, want to okay. get so in the do meeting. You, do you have a question or? Not right now. No, I, I okay. missed most of whatever you, you spoke about, so I don't know. Okay. Uh, no, for the moment. Thank you. Awesome. I thank you well, for. I appreciate you tuning in today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where I would be without the cloud service, you know, anything from Google Drive, iCloud, I, I use it all on a regular basis. So Joel, so, I mean, you're showing us how people are able to go ahead and do their math homework and, you know, their equations in uh, using uh, key math, but what if they have to upload to something like, like uh, Google Classroom? Sure. So Google Classroom is the new thing, right? In the past, I don't know, two years, it suddenly showed up. In the beginning, it was always email everything back and forth. And then maybe around 2014 and 15, everyone started wanting to use a, a, an app like Dropbox or Google Drive to share things. And then Google Classroom showed up. So all Google Classroom is, is a way of presenting your assignments in a way that groups things and and keeps it all kind of separate and, and, and well behaved, right? Mm -hmm. And I get calls every day. I guarantee you I will get one later today that says, help, Google Classroom isn't accessible. I don't know what to do. And Google Classroom is quite accessible. You know, Google's put a lot of work into that, but what is not always accessible are the assignments that people post. So you can end up going off to some crazy website that that might not be as friendly, but Google Classroom itself is great. I'm 
it, you would have to download it from the Google Play Store. And so I'm going into all applications and I'm coming down into my list of applications and I typed a C to jump to the C's here. And I'm scrolling down, here's Chrome and here's Classroom. So I'm gonna select Classroom and it's gonna open up Classroom. Now if I had, if I were a student and I had a bunch of different classes, all of the classes I'm enrolled in would show up here, right? Yeah, yeah. Now this is just a demonstration class. It, uh, my colleague Peter created a class. It's called Peter's Tough Humanware Class. <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's very descriptive. And, <laughs> and he enrolled me in the class. So I, I'm, a, I'm a student in this class. And so if I select this class, and again, I'm, I'm navigating to the list of classes. And then I'm gonna press one of my cursor keys, anyone will do. And it opens up Peter's Tough Humanware Class. Man, and here we are, new assignment, right? Here, this is called the class stream. And the class stream is much more accessible than it used to be. Uh, just, just a year or so ago, it was a mess and they told people to avoid it. And it can still be a little problematic in terms of being fully accessible, but it works pretty well. But I like to use the classwork tab, which is at the bottom. There's a list of tabs that goes across the bottom of the screen. It says stream, classwork, people, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go to the very bottom, bottom right, it says people. And if I go to the previous tab, it says classwork. And if I select classwork, here is a list of all the assignments. So if you mark something as an assignment when you're, when you're the teacher in Google Classroom and you say, I'm gonna create a new assignment, it will show up in this classwork tab. So all of the assignments have shown up here in a nice, happy, orderly fashion. Um, <clears throat> sometimes, you could post material that is just an announcement and then it won't show up here. So the, the recommended approach is to make announcements be things like, hey, we got to let out class early because of an assembly, right? That's an announcement. An yeah. announcement is not, here's your math test. So, yeah, yeah. so proper, proper use of, of Google Classroom is also a thing that needs to happen here. So here are all the different kinds of assignments we can have. Uh, here's an inspirational YouTube video, right? So you can have links to other things. You can have a link to a YouTube video. Um, it just happens that that is a uh, series of great moments in White Sox history to get you all fired up for the White Sox season. <laughs> Peter is a huge White Sox fan. He lives in Chicago and boy do you know it. Um, So here are all of our different, and, and you'll notice that some of these say completed. So this assignment has been completed, The Outsiders, chapter one and two. But I'm gonna go ahead and select that just to show you how, what an assignment looks like and how it works. So I'm opening up this assignment and it says, here are you know, some questions about the book, The Outsiders, and it's worth 100 points. And it says the questions are in Google Doc form. Now that's something Peter wrote. It, that's not magically, that's not information that's magically available to you. It is just something that is. Um, something that the teacher in this case. Yeah, Peter, you would have to write that in, in there. The classroom. Right, exactly. So there's also a place in here that says add private comment. If I, if I open that up, I could write something that my teacher would be able to read, right? Mm -hmm but I'm gonna select the expand button and it's gonna expand the, the uh, document here. And uh, I'm actually also going to unsubmit, the, I submitted this, but I'm gonna unsubmit it just so I can, yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah, I, I wanna unsubmit this work so we can open it up and you can see how easy it is to work with a Google Doc that's attached to Classroom. So here's the Google document of the questions and it's, and it's my personal copy. When you're putting a document in as a teacher, you can say, give a, make a copy for every student. And that's important because otherwise it's either going to be a read only document or it's going to be a group document, which could be what you want. But in this case, it's not. We have a copy of the questions for everyone. And I'm gonna select that and it's gonna open it up, right? 
Mm -hmm. Here we have a view of the document, but I'm going to do an extra step where I'm going to open it in Google Drive. This is one of those crucial, crucial parts of the magic here is if you do the open in Google Drive, you then can go into the document itself. Nice. And here we are. So when you're opening this document, I'm guessing uh, because we're opening up in Google Drive, we're able not only to read it, but we can go ahead and edit it. Well, ordinarily, I would say yes, Jose, but for some reason, it's telling me that it's view only. Okay. And I don't know why that's happening. Uh, it, 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 this, this is not a, a typical behavior, but ordinarily, yes, if, if the document were were a document that I could edit, which it, mm -hmm. it appears to not be letting me do at the moment, we could open it right up and uh, be editing the document. And then if you edit the document within Google Drive, we would have to go ahead and upload it back up to Classroom to, to finish Act the assignment? So, or? so actually, no. The cool thing is once you are done editing, it's just done. So, so the teacher would be able to look at that document and it would be complete. So, cool. so there's no extra step. There's no download it, edit it, and upload it. It's yeah. just ready yeah. to go. And uh, let me pop back here into our classroom. Here we are. Uh, let's see, we have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Let's see what's going on here. Give me one second. All right. Um, 305, you're unmuted. Yes. Uh Thank you. Uh, I, um, I'm not sure this is all you guys are talking about is within the Braille No Touch Plus? Correct. Today we are discussing the Braille No Touch Plus and how students are able to uh, create math documents using key math and uh, interact with teachers through uh, Google Classroom. Oh, okay. So for me to use that, I would have to uh, going to Google Classroom. I mean, and how do I access that to my, uh, is that already installed in my, my building? Oh, great, great question. So it, it is not installed by default. You would open up the Google Play Store and I can, I can show you that real quick if you'd like. I'm, I'm gonna jump back to my main menu. I'm gonna go to the Google Play Store. I typed P and it says Play Store. And I'm gonna open okay. it up here. And all you would have to do is, I'm gonna to go to the search bar here. I typed S and it says search for apps and games. And I'm gonna type, okay. I'm just gonna type classroom and type enter. And uh, now I, here we are, we've searched for the app. And you'll see it's, I already have it installed, right? But if they weren't in, if, and it says open. So my option is to open it. But if I had not already installed Google Classroom, there would be an option to install it and it would just download itself. And once it's downloaded, it would live in all applications. So I'm typing an A and jumping to all applications. And then I'm opening that up. And here's the list of all of the apps I have installed. There's probably a hundred or so in here. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna, Hey man, that's my life. If someone says, "Hey, how does how does this app work?" I gotta download it and play with it and figure it out, right? So, that's right. Uh, that's right. <laughs> so that's all I did. And here is Classroom. So Classroom gets installed from the Play Store, and now it's here. And I'm gonna open it back up, and I'm I come right back into it exactly where I left off. Capish? Oh, okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Uh, so you were asking about attaching work, right? Correct. So in addition to being able to edit that Google Doc that we just saw, there's an option a little farther down the screen, right? It's right here mm -hmm. that says add attachment. And that means that I can attach any document I want. So let's say I was reading my questions or, or looking at some kind of, of story or document that was given to me in Google Classroom, yeah. I could write my answers in keyword, right? Just like we did our homework earlier. Yep. And I could just say add attachment. 
and it says drive link file right take photo record video here are all the different ways to create the you know, to create or find the attachment right yeah yeah so there are all kinds of different ways to do that and i'm going to go down to file and we've now opened up the file manager for the braille note this is so we're looking at the local machine and you'll see here that it says if i select the braille note touch here now we're going down through the the file tree and i'm going to go into my documents folder mm -hmm. And here are a whole bunch of different documents that I could just attach to this, to this, uh, to this assignment. So if I just select one, and I select it by, there we go. There we go. And now it's and now it's uploaded and attached. And then all I would have to do is turn in, turn in my assignment and it would be all be magically attached right so here's my here's my file that i attached right here the name of it is written in here and then if i turn in my work it's going to be available as a completed assignment that is super cool and, and these I things it's important to have access to this especially today with uh, you know everyone uh doing uh distance learning i mean i know we're going into the summertime but you know there's still kids who are going to have to do summer school classes and you know who knows what we're gonna have to do in the fall so i mean this is really important to have access to and even if you don't have to do uh, uh distance learning you know uh, schools are definitely using these type of platforms to uh, for students to go ahead and upload their homework and you know receive their assignments and to interact with their teachers i mean this is super cool stuff that that's all true uh, i've also seen of course you know colleges and technical schools using google classroom because it's just a way to present the information in a coherent fashion right it's a hierarchical form of of listing things everyone's familiar with the idea of classes and assignments and everyone can create their own you don't have to pay for a subscription for google classroom or anything it's it's free it's open to anyone so jose if you want to teach a class you can do it nice and and these, this approach never changes. All Google Classroom pretty much always works the same. Again, that you can customize it a little bit based on how you create the assignments. And this format looks generally the same for other learning management systems like Canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, Canvas is very popular in some states. Works oh, yeah. pretty much yeah, the same way. Yeah. You have your classes, you have your assignments. It's all going to work generally the same way. Also works very well on the Braille Note Touch Plus. There's a new boy on the block that I've just started playing with called Schoology mm -hmm. that also presents. Oh yeah, a, yeah. You know, I, have, I have a client, a few clients actually use this. Okay. Schoology, yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you would do that in Google Chrome. You pull it up, but it's the same listing of classes and assignments. Uh, I'm not as familiar with that. I'm just starting to use that, but it's the same ideas, right? Yeah. These, these are all gonna work the same, all very friendly to the Braille Note, again, the assignments that you connect to may be created in some other format or use some other website that is not accessible, but the management systems, the LMS itself, Google Classroom, Canvas, et cetera, they all work great. Yeah, and that, that could be a future video that we can do, uh, you know, working with Canvas and Schoology. We have another question. Sure. 305, you're live. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, you. You were mentioning when, I, when you answered my last, my last question, um, I was thinking about, for example, I'm going to take a, um, a, a course in the American University, right, in D.C. So to use this uh, Google um, uh, class, the school is going to determine which platform they're going to use, right, which uh, app they're going to use. Because, yes. for example, FIU right. uses Canvas, right, which is it, it, it's, okay, it's good. It, it's like, totally accessible for, mm -hmm. for JAWS. So the school is going to determine. So it's not. Uh, this is one one of the apps that the, the universities or schools can and decide to use, right? The Google Class. Sure. So it, can it, you use Google? Yeah. Go ahead, please. So I th I think you're asking 
how do you know which one they're going to use? And you're right, it is completely up to the school or the teacher, depending on the setup. So uh, a lot of higher education systems, uh, you will use Blackboard. I'm not quite as adept with that one. Uh, it's, it's one I've seen used a little bit, maybe a little more complicated, but still usable. Uh, Google Classroom, I, you see it more in, in high schools, but I have seen it used in higher education as well. Um, in your, well, the reason I'm asking that is because, well, I'm moving out of state and I'm not sure what they, as a matter of fact, it's a good question for me to ask to be a new office because before I sign up for something, I, I, get, I need to know, it's an online course. I would like to know which platform they use because Canvas is, is pretty good. I used that last year in my paralegal certification and I got used to it. And I still have it it's on my computer. Now, I never tried it in, in Realmo Touch Plus. So I will, um, that's, that's a good answer. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to try to find out which platform they use. So awesome. this uh, Google Class is mainly for high school, you're saying, right? It may, well, you know, it, it's more it, popular for high school? Uh, high school, middle school, even elementary students are, are using it. it. It seems to be where I see it used the most, but there's no reason it can't be used in any educational setting. It's, it's free to anyone to use. So it, Yeah, it's so it's all going to depend yeah. on the school, right, the institution. So some institutions might be using, you know, some colleges, some universities, uh, and then others mm -hmm. might be using something like Canvas or Schoology. You know, we were talking about, um, Joel just mentioned, you know, he sees uh, in a lot of high schools and middle schools and elementary schools that they're using Google Classroom. But I, I've had a few students um, who are in uh, middle school levels or uh, who are going to middle school who are using Schoology. Oh, so sure. it just all depends on uh, the school and what they decide would be best for their, their, their uh, students. Right, and sometimes that even differs county by county or school by yeah. school. Yeah. And I've, I've even okay. run into an individual or two. So I have a friend who's a guitar teacher and he uses, uh, he uses uh, I'm Google Classroom. Using for Florida yeah. Vision Technology. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you, go. <laughs> you know, start giving my clients some homework and yeah. you know, have them access it. That'd be really good, a really good yeah. uh, learning tool. And you get a notification when they've done it, and you can go look it up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really going to look uh, it up. Uh, just one more question before I get muted again is um, I can download the way you, you go to, say, to download an app. I go to the same path that you, you mentioned before, right? To download Google Class. If I want to download, for example, Canvas. That's my, right. So um, when, when I went to the search box, you could type in anything you needed to find. You could look up, uh, you know, uh, Pokemon yeah, Go. You could you yeah, could download anything. you know you could download anything there, and it would search for it and bring it up. You could bring up Classroom. Oh. You could bring up Canvas. It's a search box, and you can type in anything you want to search for. As okay. long as it's in the app store and it's Fun. compatible with your device, it would definitely download. Yep. Correct. Great. All right, thank you. Awesome, thank you for your question. So we have another question in the chat, Joel. Uh, someone's asking about Microsoft Teams. Uh, are you familiar with it? Is it accessible? Uh, it is, I am familiar with it. I've used it to some degree. It does work on the Braille Note Touch. In fact, uh, my colleague Peter Tusick did a Humanware Live seminar using Google Teams uh, within the last couple of weeks. All of those are posted on our website. Uh, humanware.com. I believe if you go to the support section, it's one of the top links. And you can look at the archive of Humanware live segments. And one of them does focus on using Teams. Uh, I've just started playing with it a little bit in terms of making calls and sharing documents. But it, it is something you can install from the Google Play Store. And you can take advantage of most of those features on the Braille Note Touch. Uh, transferring files does work. It's a little bit of an interesting path to, to see where they get downloaded to and then grabbing those documents and working with them. But we do have at least one video demonstration of that. So Teams is something that you can use. Yeah, yeah. And if any of you guys are interested in a, a specific product that we carry or the features of a specific product, um, and you would like to have us go ahead and do a Zoom with us on it, like we're doing with uh, Key Math and Google Classroom today, go ahead and shoot me an email at jose at and you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll arrange it. That way we could do a live and you could go ahead and see it firsthand. 
Very cool. I'm really digging this Google Classroom, Joel. It's, yeah. It's very, yeah, it's, it looks very useful. I, personally, I've never used it before, but now that I know that anybody can take advantage of this, you don't have to be a, a school. Um, I think I think we use this for four division technology and, and, our, and our clients. It's, it's I recommend it. You could, you could even put together some of your presentations and, and some of your materials when you're doing a workshop and you can show up and kind of walk through, cool. through yeah. how you did it. And it just happens to yeah. be living in Google Classroom, so you have access, and it's a it's a demonstration of using current technology at the same time. I think that would be very a cool, cool. Uh, very slick. I could totally see you doing that, Jose. Yeah, yeah, very cool. All right, well, I think we're gonna wrap it up, guys. Uh, Joel, before we go, do you have anything that you wanna wanna say or anything for our, our, our viewers? I just wanna I wanna thank you guys again for having me. I love working with uh, Florida Vision and you and Lisa, and there, there are all kinds of things you can do on the Braille Note Touch. And of course, HumanWare has a full line of low vision and blindness products. We have uh, magnifiers, both portable and, and desktop sized, as well as our brilliant line of Braille displays, including the BI-14, a 14 cell, very portable Braille display, and the BI-40, a, uh, a larger uh, Braille display. <clears throat> and of course, we also have the Victor Stream and Victor Trek, which are talking uh, book players. Uh, the Trek also has uh, GPS built into it. And you can feel free to reach out to, well, I, I would reach out to Jose. Jose is a great contact point for, for any of our products. And if he has questions, he'll send you on to me or he'll get in touch. And we can, uh, we can do additional trainings or videos. And uh, the one other thing I'd like to mention is that HumanWare just released the HumanWare Buddy app. It's called HW Buddy, and it lives in the Google Play Store as well as the Apple App Store, and you can install that on your phone or tablet, and it has instructions and videos and all kinds of information about all of our products. So it's a great resource if you have, if you have um, support type or, or learning type uh, tasks you want to do with any of our devices. So you, you could uh, learn how to use your, your new HumanWare device by reading through the materials in the HW Buddy app. Yeah, I highly recommend it. It's very cool. It's in the iOS app store, Android app store. Go ahead and download it, sign up. And again, you'll have uh, videos. Is it videos or is it just uh, tutorials? Uh, there, hey, Joel, there is a tab for- favorite, Can you go ahead and uh, unshare the, uh, the Braille touch screen? Oh yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, yes, you uh, can do videos in there as well. There's a whole tab that has our, our videos. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I, I highly recommend the, the Human Word Buddy application. Again, it has all sorts of materials in there for any product that you're using, whether it's a uh, Connect 12, uh, Reveal 16i, uh, one of the Braille displays, Braille and Touch Plus. Uh, it's a really cool app, guys, and it's free. All you gotta do is, again, if you're using an Android-based device, go to the Google Play Store, search for a human, uh, what is it, HW Buddy? Is it HW, HW. Buddy or Human Wear? It's HW Buddy is the name. Yeah, but so I think even H just searching for Human Wear will bring it up for you. Yeah, so just search for that in the Android app store, or again, the, the iOS app store, download it. I mean, it's free to use and it's, it's really useful. And for those of you who already have a Braille Note Touch, there is an update coming in the next few weeks. Uh, we've been working on it all spring. It's gonna have an improved calculator. So the calculator will soon be able to uh, understand both Nemeth and UEB, just like KeyMath can do. Nice. And it's going to have all kinds of additional scientific functions built into it. So nice. super excited about that. that. We'll be yeah. demonstrating that in the coming weeks. Uh, I think there are a few demonstrations of it on our HumanWare live video series. And we'll certainly be promoting it at all of the upcoming su summer conventions like the ACB and NFB conventions, which we will be uh, presenting at, even though those will be be virtual, virtual we'll right? still be we'll still be going at it it'll be something very <laughs> similar to something similar to this situation but we will be there and you can see all the new <laughs> very cool man very cool well guys um i appreciate you guys joining us today again um if you have any questions suggestions or you're interested in a product you can go ahead and reach me at jose at floridareading.com that's j-o-s-e at floridareading.com Joel, we love you. We appreciate you being here with, with us today. 
And hopefully we have you back on in the future to go over some more applications and features of the Brundle Touch Plus. Anytime. Awesome, buddy. Thanks so much. Guys, that's Joe from Humanware. I'm Jose from Florida Vision Technology, and we are signing out.